Good morning, this is Kat from Ravenclaw by way of Tinkerspace. Uh, welcome to the beginning of our third annual Harry Potter week. Uh, it looks a little bit different this year than it normally does, but the house elves are in the house and wands are at the ready and we are ready to help you create your own magical world. Uh, so to kick everything off, the start of Harry Potter week, you always have to have a wand. And first you need a stick that feels right in your hands. Um, what we did is we gave it some texture with just some yarn. So I have my stick. Um, it was pre-painted for me. You could paint it if you would like. Uh, and you dip your string into glue. And so you get it nice and wet in the glue. The glue dries clear, so you'll see your string coming through. And you're going to wrap it in whatever design you would like. Right? So I wrapped it down at the bottom, spiraled it all the way up, put it in here. But there are also, you could have it in several different pieces. You can have different knots. You can have however it makes it wonderful to hold in your hand. Now I have a little bit of a glowing tip here at the end. It's not really glowing, but what I did is just, I just put a hot glue dab at the end of that to give it a little bit of a mystical quality. And then I used, um, let's see if I can get that to focus. It wants to focus on my face. Um, but I used a paint pen and um, put some swirls on there. So you could use a little bit of paint. You could use a paint pen. Uh, you could try using Sharpie depending on what color you have painted your wand. But that, today we are looking at the material of pipe cleaners. So my Dobby ears are actually on a pipe cleaner. You could make Harry Potter's glasses with pipe cleaners very easily. Uh, you can make pipe cleaner dragons. But today I am going to make a pipe cleaner bow truckle for you. So a bow truckle is a little leafy stick guy um, that has a plot point in the Fantastic Beast movies. I don't believe he has a plot point in any of the Harry Potter books, but he, he is in there. The bow truckle is, is, uh, is mentioned in the books um, briefly. So, and he is in, um, Newt Scamander's book of Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, and that is uh, from, um, that was their Care of Magical Creatures book in the first movie, or in the first book, excuse me, and in the first movie. Um, so I am going to talk you through my process a little bit of how I thought about what he needed to have. So he is, he has legs, and he has arms. So already that is four ends of a pipe cleaner. So I knew that I was going to need two pipe cleaners. But as I thought about it, I would like him to stand on his own. So he really needs three legs, a little tripod down at the bottom. So I cut another, it was gonna give me one more end that I needed to have. And so I cut a, another half piece of pipe cleaner. So then I took one of my long, oh, and then I have all these silk flowers, um, that we get from the dollar store or they get donated to me sometimes. And I pulled the leaves off, let's see. So there is a hole through the center of it and I can fit a pipe cleaner into that hole. It's one of the reasons pipe cleaners are so great for putting out there with an invitation. If you have some beads that you can put with them, um, the, with the nice, stiff end, they can go through so much, right? So I kind of, I gave him his little leafy top and I have two legs sticking down. My pipe cleaner is showing a little wear because I have made him and taken him apart, um, but that's okay. He's gonna end up still looking adorable. So I'm gonna twist it down until he gets two legs down here at the bottom. So I have my leafy top, I have my legs, I can twist it and orient it until I feel like his, uh, he's facing the right direction. Right, I'm going to go ahead and add his third tripod leg on there. So I'm going to match up the length at the bottom and then wrap this piece about. And you know, you probably, you possibly could use another full um, 
green pipe cleaner because that would just give a little bit more thickness to his body. Right? But now I have three ends down and I can test and see if he will stand. And he will if the wind's not blowing on him. Okay, so that leaves me a nice long one for his arms. And I'm gonna start it way up at the top and twist it around because I wanna give him a little bit of added thickness. So I'm gonna start by twisting it tightly and then twist it a little loosely just so that he gets some bulk to the upper part of his body. And he has a very, very long arms because he actually looks kind of viney, twiggy, sticky. So I'm gonna wrap it around, set it down, and then you get to pose him and figure out how you want him to stand. And if you want to give him, he actually um, has kind of more tendrils coming off of here. So if you wanted to um, twist it around to make more tendrils, or if you wanted to add a few more little pieces onto the ends and have him drape off and just be a little bit more sticky and viney, uh, that would be up to you. And that's how you could tinker with it. So my last step is to put some glue onto this corner and glue it to this one. I think I might have used tacky glue on my other one. I'm not sure how well this Elmer's glue is going to go over the crayon. I think you might need to use liquid glue, so school glue or tacky glue. So I'm not going to try and glue the other one. Otherwise, you have to hold it much longer. But I think that you guys are capable of gluing your pieces together. So I'm going to end it there. Today we are going to make um, some of the more human friends uh, that we find in the Harry Potter world. So I have uh, my Ron Weasley clothespin puppet here. So we love whimsy at Tinker Space. I love making things that move and you guys all seem to as well. So I just wanna show you this very simple technique. I have a, um, I have a punch that gives me a circle, but you could trace something, you could use a compass, um, but you just need to get a nice circle. And you know what? It doesn't even have to be a circle and you need a clothespin. So whatever shape you are making there, you are just going to cut it in half and attach half to each side of your clothespin. Right, so here is my face cut in half and you can see that it is glued onto each half of my clothespin. And then whatever you do from there just adds to your character, right? So we put, we wanted it to be Ron Weasley, so we gave him his red hair, his freckles, we put a cute little rounded nose on him, so that's just a little circle that we glued onto the back. Uh, we put him in his black robe and gave him his wand. I think with the orientation of these and how he turns out, I think it would be great to have him flying on a broomstick um, so that's something that you could add to it. Make a paper dragon. Sometimes I call this a dragon kite. So you need a piece of paper. I like construction paper for this. It's nice and, and bendy and uh, floppy, but it already has some color on it. Uh, you'll need a ribbon or a piece of string, and then you'll need a way to poke a hole, um, either a hole punch or you can use a sharp pencil to do that. And uh, if you have a stapler, that is best. So it's very simple start, and then you can do with it what you will. Those are our favorite kinds of invitations. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it in half uh, a short way. Right? So hamburger, I'm gonna put it down on my table here to crease it, sorry you can't see that. But I just have it folded in half, and creased there and that is the only crease you're going to make so this is the this is the part you need to really pay attention to I'm gonna have my stapler at the ready and I'm gonna take one corner and fold it down over here but I'm not gonna crease it and then I'm gonna take the other corner and fold it down there and I'm not gonna crease it you see how I have these nice 
uh, loops I can see you through right there. So I'm going to take where I have uh, four layers of paper here, right? My paper folded in half, and then I have this side folded down and this side folded down. That's all right there, and I'm going to staple it. Now, if you don't have a stapler, you could glue it there. You, um, you could poke your hole and just use your ribbon to keep it closed tightly, um, but a staple is really just the nice way to go here. So then right somewhere around that staple, it doesn't need to be exactly under it. It can be a little in front of it, a little bit behind it. Uh, I'm going to poke a hole. If you need to do that with a pencil, you're going to, I don't think I have to do it from this way aiming towards you, but you're going to put pressure here and you're going to have your fingers on either side where your pencil is going to go through and then you're going to poke your pencil through. So however you need to, you get a hole down there and you're going to thread your ribbon through. I could only find my small hole punch. This is a small hole. Oh good. I didn't need my glasses to get that in. So I just want to pull it through a little bit and tie it on securely at one end. Okay, so I have my flying part portion attached to a string and let's see if I can back up enough and it's a very satisfying kind of fly. I just wave my ribbon through the air here and he flies. So with this basic piece here, you can now turn it into something. You can add a head on, you could add tail, you could add details to it. And if you do something and it doesn't fly very well anymore, you just grab another piece of construction paper and you go ahead and you try again, right? So we've had dragons made, we've had hippogriffs made, you could make a phoenix. Uh, those are all in our Harry Potter theme. You could just make a sweet bird. Today we are showing you how to fold and color these dragon eyes. Um, they don't have to be dragon eyes. You can do different types of pupils and, uh, and different looks to them to get human eyes, to get cat eyes, to get dog eyes, whatever creature you want. Again, movement, whimsy, it's what I like. Um, I like to have a little bit of movement. I that we will be making. I used pastels when I made this eye. It looks like I could get a little bit more black in there. Pastels are nice because they, um, they cover so completely. But you can see that I do want to be able to leave some white here occasionally. Um, but I'm going to show it to you today with crayons. So I have a square piece of paper. It's just copy paper. And so if you, when you need to make it a square, oh, this wasn't just copy paper, but I'm going to show you this anyway. If you fold one, um, the top edge to a side edge and do it as neatly and squarely as you can and then cut off this portion of it, then you will have a square. This is going to be my scratch paper so that I can color right up to the edge. So I'm going to start with a square piece of paper. Um, I do need some crayons. I definitely need black and then I need um, three or four colors in the same color family and kind of arrange them from light to dark. Uh, and then I'm a little bit of glue. Um, but that is because I actually glue these pieces to each other to keep them there. If you don't want to do that, you can just leave it where you hold it each time. But I like gluing it. Okay, so let's get started with the folding. So we are going to fold diagonally, corner to corner. With uh, folding paper, you always want to get your end point matched up and held really well and then draw your finger back towards you and then come out to the edges. I'm going to open it back up and I, I'm actually going to fold the other direction as well so that I have a center line to work with. So let's fold this direction as well. That way I know that I'm getting my folds straight. I don't think I'm getting that fold straight though. You can work it much more carefully and slowly. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to bring one corner to the center and I'm going to line my lines up there to make sure that I'm running it nice and straight. 
and then I'm going to fold up again. And then I'm going to unfold it and I'm going to tuck this one in. So I have a lot crease to go along and I'm just reversing that crease and then folding this up like this. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to bring my point right up to that center, make sure that my line is nice and straight, and then fold my corner to that line that I've made there. You can see this line. I feel like I did those two differently, but I have the same result. I just have it folded up to the center. Those are going to be my eyelids, this right here. Okay, so I'm going to fold it backwards, right? This is where my eye is going to be, right here. And I'm going to fold it backwards, right along that center crease. And I'm going to make sure that all of my creases are flat. And then I'm going to fold these tips to the center from the back side. Okay, so I'm starting from the other side here. I'm starting to see my, where my eye is going to be. Okay. So on the back side here, I have my center crease and I have um, this corner here. This edge I'm going to fold alongside this piece of my fold here. So I'm going to bring it up from my center crease there right to the center of this side. And I'm going to fold that up and I get this angle that's roughly parallel to this fold here. I'm going to do that in all four directions. So from this center point and this center point, I'm going to fold them up and it's going to run right alongside this fold. Right. That is what I'm going to, at the end, I'm going to glue those together right there. So I can hold them for right now and show you the eye that we get that will open and close. So if you don't want to make an eye at this point, this would be a great mouth, but we have nice movement here. Okay, I am going to unfold because now I have to draw my eye. So this is where my eye is going to be, right? My eyelids pulling back, and this area right here is where my eye is going to be. So I'm going to start with my black crayon, and I'm going to, from this point and this point, I'm going to draw as circular a shape as I can. With my black crayon. And then I'm going to draw another circle with my black crayon just inside it. And I'm going to do a teeny tiny circle, a little off center, and then a slightly bigger circle, which is going to be the center of my pupil. So those are kind of my guiding lines that I have there. A large outer circle, as large as I can, uh, slightly inside it, a center circle, and this is going to be my, my little shine, my little white place that's going to stay white. So I can actually color inside my pupil. I'm actually going to have more pupil, but I can go ahead and, and color this round part in right here, leaving my little shine spots white. And you do want to try and cover as much white as you can, which is why pastels are nice. 
you might want to consider doing um, marker. It's just that marker is hard to go over the crayon and you are going to end up going over the crayon. Okay, so I'm going to start with my darkest blue that I'm going to do and I'm going to do this ring and I'm again going to try and cover all possible white. I just broke my crayon. So sad. I am moving fairly quickly, but I want to make sure you see the whole process. So if I were doing this on my own, I would go much slower with this, but I want to cover all the white I possibly can. And then inside that next black line, I'm going to go with my next bloom. And again, I'm going to cover it very thoroughly, leaving no whites. Get a ring all the way around the outside. I'm going to go with my next blue, and I'm going to keep this one also very thorough. Very um, solid coverage. I'm trying to think of the right word that I want. That's solidly in there. And then my last blue, I am going to leave quite a bit of white showing. So I'm going to kind of circle it around. I think I pulled some of the black. You might not want to do that. Okay. And then I have more black to do because, well, let's, let's see what this looks like for right now. When I close this up and I take a look at my eye. Get that to get closed. I take a look at my eye. It looks very eye-like, but doesn't look very dragon-like. So we're going to make it just a little bit more dragon-like because that's what my choice is today. If you're making a different type of eye, maybe you want to leave around people. Uh, maybe you want to leave white in there. But I want black all the way to the creases. as little white showing as possible. Now I just covered over some of my blue because I'm working so fast. I'm sure that you will do that nicer. And I like having this part black as well. And I'm not going to take the time to getting crayon off of table is annoying. So if you're going to the edge of a paper, make sure you put another piece of paper in there. But I am going to color around over here where I know it's going to get seen. Right. And we'll want that darker, but I'm going to leave that for right now because the last thing that I need to make sure that I get is my kind of cat-eyed shape here, my marquee pupil as opposed to a round pupil. So now to do the black crayon over all of that blue crayon. So if you're doing markers, you might want to do that part first and then do crayon up to it. If you're doing pastels, they blend the easiest. Um, it's just that not everybody has pastels. So I wanted to show you that you could do it with crayon. Okay, so here we are with our eye that we're going to need to glue those parts down there, but we can take a look at the eye that we have peeking in. So I just need to do my eyelids. So I'm going to leave it just at this part of my fold. I'm going to do a two-toned eyelid here with blue closest to the eye. And then I'm going to do purple on the rest of the eyelid for my purple dragon. If you have a red dragon, you could do red. You can do whatever color you want. 
you can imagine a polka dotted dragon if you would like. All up to you. And really this piece is the only part that I'm going to see, but it's okay to go past the edges that are going to get glued. You are going to have to glue over this. So gluing over waxy crayon, you might need to use a, a liquid glue. But let's see what we have. Oh, I have one more step that I want to do. All right, so here is my eye thus far. And that coloring's nice, but dragons have scales. So let's put a little bit of scaling on it. So I'm going to do some vertical lines right across the eye opening. And then some zigzaggy lines all the way across the eyelid. And again, you can do this very, very carefully. I am trying to do it fast because we are all, I'm showing you the whole process. Okay, and there we go. We have our dragon eye.